Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. I am back from vacation, so this is a new video. Um, thanks for your patience while I've been gone. If you've watched any of the last three videos, you should know those were previously recorded and I had filmed them before I went on vacation. I was gone for about a week and went to Washington, D.C. I may make a video about that experience there, although I don't know that most people would even want to know anything about it, but um, it is somewhat curious. However, I don't want to mix that with any technical thing, so there you go. Point is, I'm back. Okay, today's video is a technical video. It's a uh, product review video, and this one is over the AFR 315 uh, Big Block Chevy Heads. Now, these ones aren't the, are not slightly different from what you would get if you just bought an AFR 315, and I'll explain the differences, and I'll be as honest as I can. I'm going to give you flow numbers, too, because I know I think it's important. I want to give you an actual flow numbers from my bench, um, I used it on the Sanyas. I didn't use my Superflow. The reason why is it would take too long to flow. Um, I floated on two different bores, a 4310 and a 4625 to see if there was any difference because of the bore size, which, by the way, there was. Now, let's talk about some of the differences between like a standard AFR 315 versus this one. This one is the only difference is if you order an AFR 315, the difference between this one is this one from the factory, from AFR, I had them mill them down to 110 cc's. So they come in at 121 stock. The chamber size now is 110 cc's. The customer was targeting a specific um, compression ratio and to do that, he wanted the chambers at this size. Because of this, the chambers themselves have been shrunk down due to the um, milling. Now, milling does typically affect flow numbers and the biggest reason is this. Let me get my pen so I can show you. If you notice here, this is where the mill is cut through and you can see it's actually cut into part of the seat. This is what happens when you have heavy milling. It's nothing negative about it, just letting you know. What can hurt airflow is that right there. So this is the seat and this is our top cut. Now we need to have some top cut because it helps the air make the turn and go this way. You have to have it to help it make the turn. One of the worst things you could do for the flow, actually, especially in the low lifts, is if you mill this out or take this all the way out. Now, I've seen this happen from um, different manufacturers from time to time and for people that brought in heads to be ported. Someone milled the crap out of them trying to get the compression ratio up, not thinking, yes, you gain compression ratio, but because of the loss of flow, you're actually making less power. Um, typically, whenever I do this type of stuff, what I'll do first is I'll take the valve job and I'll sink it in so that I've got a lot of top cut, then mill, so this way it's all the way out. But if you can see, it's got a pretty good amount of top cut. I'd say it's about 60 thousandths. I haven't measured exactly right here at its thinnest point. You can tell it's much wider in these sections. But that's critical for flow. Now, because of the milling, it gets removed. So if you look at this head and I compare it to an AFR 315, which this is, an out-of-the-box one, that would have a top cut that would be this wide all the way through. So it's probably going to flow more air. And AFR on their website advises that if you have um, any milling done, it will affect airflow. And that is true because it's removing the top cut. Now, this doesn't mean that this couldn't be like helped. One of the things you could do is you could, like I said, take the do a valve job and sink it down until this top cut comes all the way back out to here. The catch with that is as you drop down the valve job, the chamber itself will increase because the valve's sinking in. So the way I do it is, I will um, sink the valve job in, but mill more than I have to. Actually, first thing I do is use a mill. And I'll mill a few um, thousandths more than what I need to to make up for me dropping the valve job down so the chamber size ends up correct. This isn't wrong, by the way. It's got a pretty good amount of top cut. If it had none, then I'd be uh, not so happy. I'd have to do something. But anyway, so there's one of the major differences. Uh, this has a 225 intake valve and a 188 exhaust valve. The CNC work, now these are fully CNC ported. These are not as cast, these are full CNC ported all the way through the in intake port, all the way through the exhaust and the chamber. The chamber by far has one of the smoother finishes. If you know AFR, whenever you get any heads from them, they have a smooth finish, uh, finer finish on the chamber and a rougher finish. When you order the full CNC heads, they're finer finish. It helps flow. Um, the valve job looks pretty good, but you can tell they also must have dropped the valve job down because there is a slight lip here that you usually don't see. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, 
This is the long runner and this is the short runner. As I'm flowing the heads, I'm gonna show you both numbers because most times people only advertise the flow from this long runner. This long runner is because it's longer than the short runner on the big block. And I know it's kind of weird for you, the rest of you guys are watching these videos and you're like, what are you talking about? Everybody tries to get the flow of the equal and if you ever have a big block head, you're like, hmm, you guys really spend a lot of time for that because this runner will never flow the same as this one. You can get close, but it'll never flow the same. So it's not like your small block Chevy LS heads, Ford heads, those things. Those are all pretty close to the same. It's not that case in the big block world, Chevy anyway. I mean, the long runner usually flows better. P typically, the reason why is if you look at the way it's shaped, it's gonna it's aiming towards the center. But if you look at the short side, the short runner, it's aiming towards the wall. So it typically doesn't flow quite as well. Now this um, I measured the ports itself. In case you're wondering, the throat is ninety. I mean, 90.6%. The bowl comes in at 97%. So there's that. And the push rod pinch was 3.52 the way I measured. Now I didn't take out the valve, by the way, in case you're wondering on the throat diameters. So anyway, there's your percentages, but I'll take you a quick show you around the rest of this head because it is pretty nice. You can tell it's full CNC. Sorry, no, no good lighting here. I'm just trying to get this done so I can get some other tasks done. And the exhaust ports are done. And the exhaust ports, by the way, look really great. They are raised up, so I'll just go ahead and tell you. And these are raised up. Now there are some heads that actually raise the exhaust ports more. Brodex has a port that's raised up higher than this. But um, it's a nice raised exhaust port and looks pretty good. A good inside view of the head itself. Okay. All right, now let me tell you what I did. I went ahead and floated on a 4310 bore because I only have two bore plates for a big block Chevy for a 4310, which is common for a bore size for a 496. And then my other bore size is a 4625. That's close to what you'd see for a 565 and all the way up 598, 582, um, 632. They're all about that. They're actually at 46 and this is a 4625, so it's bigger. So you can think about this is about the biggest bore you can run with a big block Chevy. You can run a little bit more, but you get the idea. Anyway, the idea was to see if maybe if I unshroud the valve with the bigger bore, if we'll have a difference in flow. I'm gonna share those results. So anyway, let's look at those results. Okay, here are the results from the 4310 bore. Now I did not put an exhaust pipe on here. Some people float that way. I've talked about this in several different videos. I, I don't do that. Um, anyway, we'll look at the numbers. If you, the ones I care most about are four, six, and one. And several people were asked about the one inch. The reason why I flow that far is because it tells how stable the port is. So we look at 400 inch, and this is a four tenths of an inch valve lift. 287 on the long runner, this being the long runner, which I just described, that one. And that's the short runner, and this is the short runner's flow. So if we look at the uh, long runner, 288 on a 4310 bore, that is outstanding, especially on a 225 valve. That's really, really good. Um, if you tell from the short runner though, 276, still a great number for that bore size. Really good number there. But this goes that they, the short runner does not flow the same as the long runner. You could tell they're off. The short runner flows less. So anyway, um, there's those. So the really good numbers there. 600 number, you have 352, 333. The short runner is really weak right here. And a matter of fact, this whole short runner, pretty much till you get to one inch is, it, besides the 400 number, the numbers after that are not that great. They're not horrible, but they're not that great. I mean, if you compare it, especially the long runner, the long runner is really good. 352 at six and 365 at seven. So those are common numbers for you guys, really good. Peak was actually at 371 at 800 lift. And the reason why I keep flowing it um, up is because you can see it starts backing up and flow. Meaning the port is not stable with the more amount of air that goes through it. The short side can't keep up with it and other things as well. The long run, or sorry, the short runner doesn't quite have that problem. So it keeps flowing all the way up. But the catch is it's, of course, down by almost 20 CFM. Now, this is the exhaust flow. Exhaust is pretty good, really good. Remember, there's no exhaust uh, pipe attached, and it's flowing at 4, 229. Really good. Now, remember, this is all on a 4, 3, 10 bore. My bore is not notched out. I do not notch the top of my bore on my flow plate. If you, were, if you have a 4, 3, 10 bore, you should notch your bores. They will flow more. The numbers will be higher than what you see here. I just don't do it on mine because not all heads have that. So that's this one. Let's look at the 4625 now. 
This is the flow numbers from the much bigger 4625 bore. And if we go back at four, look how much 298. That is outstanding. And the short runner itself is 295. Remember, this is the long runner, short runner. So really great flow. I'll go ahead and say there are several of my race heads that don't do this. I mean, more race heads. Then I flow 500 to see if I'm here, but they're not hitting that number at four. Um, 600. 368, not bad for the long runner, and 349 for the short runner. So it's still about 20 CFM difference. Um, if you look at peak flow on the long runner, you're at 378, and it hit it at one inch. But if you notice, if you look at it, 368.8, and call that 369, 369, 370, 373, 378. So it kind of levels off. The short runner, of course, keeps flowing, and it hits a peak of 372, so it's pretty good. The exhaust flow also did pick up as well. I mean, you can tell now it's flowing a peak at 292. How's this compared to the 4310 board? Well, here we go. I'm just scooting it over so you can see. This is 4310, 4625. Just comparing at 400. 287 to a 297. Again, 10 CFM. And if you're talking about the short runner, 276 to 295, almost 20. 600 went from 351 to 368, so quite a big jump there. 349. 333. Good numbers there. The exhaust itself even picked up. If you look at the peak, 284, 291, it picked up. 400, it went from 229 to 233. So the point being is the bigger bores, if you can um, unshroud these valves, will flow more air. Now, it, you would say, well, it's not that much more flow in the long runner. Matter of fact, it's actually worse. Well, not worse, but pretty close to the same at some areas. Like 800, it's 369, let's call it 370. It's 371 on the 4310. You're like, why is that? How does that happen? I mean, the valves are out and shrouded. Shouldn't that not be the case? Well, what's happening is, and I'm going to try to make this a quick explanation. Because the valves are unshrouded, the port can move more air. The problem is that port cannot support any more air. The speeds are too fast and it can't make the turn. Because of that, even though the valves are out of the way, which helps with some of the flow, the airspeed through the short side can't support it anymore flow, and you end up with a port that flows about the same, even though you've unshrouded it. Um, how could you fix that? More short side work. However, then the port itself would not be 315 cc's. Anyway, there's your product review video. Um, it's a good head, and it will make quite a bit of power. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks again for watching.